So let's talk, uh, let's talk next a little bit about what causes biotin deficiency outside of things that impact or affect your absorption. So we, we mentioned earlier that um, inflammatory bowel disease is going to obviously it's going to affect your ability to absorb biotin. But are there other things that can contribute to biotin deficiency that, you know, that you should be aware of? So there are a number of things in the research that we know that, that can contribute to biotin deficiency. And one of them is alcohol. So alcohol is a big factor. And alcohol, let's talk about that for a minute because a lot of people just, you know, they just drink and it's a socially accepted paradigm that, you know, drinking is, is safe and, and, and uh, relatively harmless. But, you know, here's the thing. It depends on the quantity of alcohol that we we're discussing because a lot of people will tell you that a glass of wine every night is healthy, right? Remember that it's, it's not alcohol in kind of small doses incrementally here or there, but it's consistent use of alcohol over time that acts as a, as a damaging agent to your liver, but also acts as a diuretic in many ways causes the depletion of B vitamins. And a lot of your B vitamin deficiency diseases are known to be caused, especially in people who are alcoholics. Now, how do we define an alcoholic? Because some people are functional alcoholics. I mean, I've run into people that are drinking every night and they still get up, go to work. They're able to take care of their responsibilities. I would call that functional alcoholism, meaning they're not drunks, right? But you got to be real careful because the long-term exposure to alcohol consistently over time is definitely going to contribute to a biotin deficiency. So a glass of wine a night, as an example, in my opinion, is too much. Uh, if you're talking about alcohol consumption, look at it as a once a week and not, not like don't drink seven drinks to make up for the other six nights, but, but you know, a glass on a weekend or a glass on a weeknight, but, you know, let, keeping it in, in direct and very much in moderation. Um, additionally, I mentioned this before, reduction in stomach acid. And again, think about this from the perspective of medications that you might be taking to, to suppress gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD if you've been diagnosed with GERD and you're on like a Prilosec or a Tagamet or one of these other over-the-counter acid reducing medications. Look, you're running the risk of increasing your risk of biotin deficiency by suppressing your capacity to generate effectively stomach acid. Smoking is another one. So smoking can cause biotin deficiency. There have been a number of studies that show the correlation between biotin levels in the in the blood and smokers. So smoking is another one. Hopefully most of you listening to this show, if you're tuning in to me, you, you probably already know that it's not a newsflash that smoking is not healthy, right? So um, if you're one that, you know, found, find yourself addicted, you know, this might be something you go back to your doctor and say, look, I'm trying to quit, but test my levels. I want to make sure I'm not creating more problems. Pregnancy, and although pregnancy is not, you know, it's not a condition per se, it's a condition, right, of giving, of getting ready to give birth, but pregnancy um, has been linked as well. Pregnancy and breastfeeding have been linked to biotin, to increasing biotin utilization and, and biotin deficiency or the potential for biotin deficiency. So pregnant women, in my opinion, should be tested. And if you're pregnant, those of you that are listening, maybe you're not pregnant, but maybe you know someone who is. Look, it's very, very important and it's very critical that anyone who is pregnant has their nutritional status checked during the pregnancy and then during breastfeeding, because you're eating for two, and it's very, very easy to develop nutritional deficit during this time frame. It's, it's a very, very common phenomenon. As a matter of fact, some of the lab testing that, that I run consistently on people and the, the most deficient individuals I've ever seen clinically are generally either pregnant or breastfeeding women. So realize that, that um, very, very smart idea to ask your OB-GYN to run a full nutritional workup on you, post or prepartum, postpartum, breastfeeding, et cetera, you wanna know so that you can make an accommodation or an adjustment in what you're taking because a prenatal doesn't cut the mustard for what's actually necessary 
in most cases. A prenatal is going to usually be pretty weak in a lot of your different nutrients. It's going to be low in minerals and it's going to be marginally high in some of the B vitamins, but it's not really going to be therapeutic if you have major deficiencies. And then, of course, there are other things that are, are notorious for creating uh, biotin deficiency. And one of those is, is, um, is, is if you've ever been in the hospital and they had to IV your nutrition, so they had to direct your nutrition around your GI tract. It's a very, very common cause or can be a cause of biotin deficiency, as well as if you've had a stomach surgery where you've had like a bypass, like a ruin Y, where you're bypassing the stomach acid all together through the surgical procedure, like that's a common contributing factor or an increased risk for developing biotin deficiency. So uh, stomach surgeries, bypass, very common surgery being done nowadays for people who want to lose weight, but again, increasing that risk of developing a deficiency. Another one that is not talked about very commonly is, we'll draw a number five down here, is egg whites. Um, if you grew up when I did, you remember watching Rocky Balboa suck down the eggs, the raw egg shakes, right? And there's a protein in egg whites and in, in, it's in only really found to a great degree in raw egg whites called avidin, A-V-I-D-I-N. And that protein binds biotin. It prevents you from absorbing it. So it makes the biotin in the egg really hard to absorb. So if you're doing a lot of raw egg whites, this could, could potentiate a biotin deficiency. Now, if you're cooking the egg thoroughly, um, you don't have to worry about it because when you cook the egg, the avidin, the protein that binds biotin is denatured. And so no, it allows that biotin to be freed up. So again, Raw egg whites, but not cooked egg whites can create a problem with biotin. Now, I don't suspect that probably today's age that too many of you are probably doing a ton of raw egg whites, but this was a super popular nutritional um, shake, so to speak, in the, in the 1980s. And so it's something that's kind of passed out of favor, but some of you might be doing it. So I thought I would mention it. So again, raw egg whites. There's also inborn errors of metabolism that can occur with, with, as a creator of biotin deficiency, but these are quite rare. I and mean, the incidence of these is like one in 130,000 or so. So it's not a super common thing at all. And it's usually caught very, very early in infancy. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about inborn errors of metabolism. Next, I want to go to some of the medications that actually can deplete biotin because a lot of you might be taking medications. So let's Let's pull up that slide on medicines that deplete biotin. So I mentioned already the stomach acid suppressing drugs can do it. So things that block stomach acid very commonly can cause uh, the increased risk for developing of a biotin defi deficiency, but then there are also seizure medications. So if you have a diagnosis of epilepsy, there's some research studies that show that anti-epileptic seizure medications actually deplete biotin as well. And remember what I said earlier, ataxia, neuropathy, depression, these are all neurological symptoms of biotin deficiency. So if you're taking a seizure medication and you start to develop these symptoms, you might start suspecting biotin um, as a potential culprit in that process. So, so, you know, again, be aware that if you are taking epileptic medication that you know that those drugs can cause biotin deficiency directly and ask your doctor to monitor your levels. I would say check, have your levels checked about every six months and just make sure you don't develop a problem. Now, one of the other medications that's notorious for causing biotin deficiency is the antibiotic. And here's why. The good thing about biotin, as, as, as with a few of the other B vitamins, is that you actually can make it. About 50 percent of your daily biotin is produced by your GI tract. It's produced by your microbiotic flora. So you, your bacteria that live inside of you make half of the biotin that you need. And so remember, good bacteria make biotin. And that biotin can be absorbed by your GI tract. And, and so that's a good thing, right? About 50 percent of our daily need and so what do antibiotics do? Antibiotics 
wipe out good bacteria. And so I'm not talking about a person who maybe had a dose of antibiotics when they were two once because they had a major infection and that they have to be worried about, you know, the 35 today and they have to be worried about biotin deficiency today. I'm talking about people that go on antibiotic after antibiotic after antibiotic. So if you were the the kid with chronic recurring ear infections repetitively and your mom took you every two weeks to the doctor and you were on an antibiotic six times a year, or maybe you're an adult and you know, you, you've know you been suffering with chronic inflammatory bowel disease that was caused by something like Clostridium difficile, a common infection that leads to ulcerative colitis. Um, look, these are, these are, those are the people who are at greatest risk is those of you who have taken multiple rounds of antibiotics repetitively over and over and over again. Remember, antibiotics are very serious medications and shouldn't be used lightly. In my opinion, they shouldn't really be used without a culture, meaning if the doctor can't culture the bacteria and identify that you actually have a bacterial infection, then rethinking the antibiotic is probably a good idea. Most people aren't in a life-threatening situation when they take an antibiotic. Most people are taking their kids to the pediatrician or going to the general doctor and you know, they're being told they have something like strep or staph, you know, not necessarily life-threatening infections, but the antibiotics are being handed out like candy to a lot of people. And again, biotin, 50% of your biotin is produced by your good bacteria. Now, we talked about vitamin K a few weeks ago, and I said that about 50, 60% of your vitamin K need comes from your good bacteria as well. So you can add vitamin K to that list if you don't remember us having that conversation. So those are the big ones. So again, the antibiotics, the antacids, the anti-epileptic or seizure medications, and then the gastric bypass as a, as a, even though it's not a medication per se, it's a medical procedure that can increase your risk for the development of a biotin deficiency. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.